Alrighty guys, we got a extremely special guest today. Very special, for real. Me being a skateboarder is freaking amazing. Um, Alright guys, look. Pro skateboarder, pastor, family man, good man, Brian Sumner with us. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm awake now. I mean, it's only 12 here. I was up late, but your introduction woke me up. How you guys doing? Good, good oh, man. Great. What's going on, brother? Just, you know, uh, some of the, the cousins are over. The kids are running around crazy. I've had a busy week, which is good. So I'm just kicking it with you guys and then rest, get some stuff done. But uh, God's good. Yeah. Amen to that, bro. Amen to that. Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah, yeah, man. So, dude, tell us, man, like how, okay, little Sumner, man. How were you as a little kid, man? <laughs> how was I as a little kid? Uh, how, how were you as a little kid, man, picking out the board for the first time, brother? You know, um, it's funny because... I guess we only gauge how we look at like childhood from what we know. Like, you know, you guys are sitting here with the camo hat on and it looks like you're probably out more hunting in that lifestyle. So <laughs> you see that as the norm. And so for me growing up in Liverpool, you know, uh -huh. England, that's why I sound this way. Um, I was just a grom that uh, it was kind of rough. It was kind of tough. You know, um, you get into a lot of fights in school. Yeah, it's fun. And the city's got the anthem, you'll never walk alone, you know, the famous song. Um, but I was kind of just did my own thing, you know, did some martial arts, hung out and spent a lot of time with my dad and my cousins. And my life didn't really make sense. And what I mean by that is to anyone who's like a kid listening, you know, or looking back, we don't have a clue. We're just kind of looking at our parents, our cousins. And it was until, yeah, 13-ish, about 12, when I started noticing skateboarding, uh -huh. that would become the whole avenue. But before that, I was just a kid, you know, I, I had book teeth, and I had to get braces later on, <laughs> and, and I was raised, it's funny, I was just raised watching Army and Western and uh, martial arts, like Bruce Lee films, right. so I had this idea, and then Liverpool was really rough, and I always avoided craziness, but then I'd always end up getting into it, so I was a good kid, I worked hard, I wanted to honor my parents, mm -hmm. but I feel like I just got into, like, because of other people, kind of craziness. Right. But I'll say that, you know, for those who know about skating, skating really rescued me because by the time you're 10, 11, 12, you know, the older cousins and brothers for people, they're starting to do acid and trips and ecstasy and raves is really big in England. And, um, you know, Liverpool is just a massive culture. So you've got everyone starting to get stoned and party a bit. Mm -hmm. And so you either kind of side into going to clubs and partying and selling drugs and not in a sketchy way. It's mm -hmm. more like, oh, this is just what we do. So mm -hmm. I either would have just, you know, I don't know what else I would have done if skating didn't show up and kind of like, this is the direction. Right. And once I picked up a skate, a skateboard at 13, and that was the focus. And then, you know, you skated as you have, you start skating an hour a day, three hours, you know, five, six, seven hours a day. Right. You don't realize it as a kid, but that makes you very disciplined. And um, that sticks with you yeah. through life. Because, you know, every time you fall off, which is how you start, you're going to get back up or not. Every mm -hmm. time you land wrong, you're going to make it right or not. Mm -hmm. And that kind of craft. And, and it's, I'll just say, because you know, we, we can talk about anything. I mean, go wherever. Um, right. But I think just growing up, I didn't care too much about football. You know, the one that you kick with your foot, it's a ball. Real football. Right. Right. Not soccer. <laughs> real football. <laughs> right, right. And so aside from that and watching these films, all I did was play video games. And video games teach you to start something mm -hmm. and finish. You know, mm -hmm. and it was like Kung Fu Master, Yeah Kung Fu, Double Dragon, <laughs> Dragon Ninja, Street yep. Fighter, all fighting games. <laughs> yep. but, it, it, but it put in me this discipline of like, start something, finish. Then I started skating and then it was kind of a rescue mission. It got me out of just, you know, where I felt like I could have been. So, yep. yeah. I hear you. I hear you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> but I was a funny looking kid. I mean, I definitely looked <laughs> and a funny bowl head haircut. I'll have to send you guys some photos for the episode. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. I hear you, brother. <laughs> I mean, I was pretty funny looking, too, so I still am. So. <laughs> I know. Most kids are. I mean, that's funny. So, yeah, that was it. And then I don't know where you want me to go. I mean, do you want to lead into skating or, or just, I mean, because Liverpool itself, you know, it's gotten crazy. It's gotten rough. Um, America is a place where I feel like, yes, there's drugs in places, but, but it's almost like the gangs and the guns. It's because they're dealing with each other. Mm -hmm. In England, you grow up watching these movies, watching these films, seeing these things right. to where now the kids that I grew up with, they got into gangs. 
they're in prison for, you know, 10, 20 years because they're just driving around in Land Rovers with guns selling drugs. Right. But it's not gang on gang. It's just whoever. So right. it's very dark like that where people mm -hmm. just don't want to deal with it, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Eden. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you, bro. Yeah. yeah. Well, dude, like, okay. All right. Dude, what, what, like, what, is there any trick that you can think of, brother, that like, you know, that, you know, that you've had a hard time with, you know? Skateboard trick? Right. Um, you know, I've never done front feebles. I've never done backsmiths. I've never done those tricks well. You know, I was always a backside flip, salad grind, front, front blunt kind of guy. It was very right. easy. Right. Um, that was it, but I mean, front feebles, backsmith, those tricks are really hard for me. Um, that, and, and you know, nollying on the handrails, that was really tough. Oh my so, God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very hard. Man. <laughs> yeah, I, what about you? Oh man, I, man. I, well, I'll tell you what, man. Like, uh, dude, I, I can't even comprehend the concept of yeah. a backside nose blunt, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, you know, some people are made that way, like I, I'll hear these like MMA guys, you know, or sports people, and they'll say, you know, hard work trumps talent. Like, I get it, the hard work. But you see with skating, there's a different kind of talent. Like, I feel like I was just hardworking, but there's guys today like Shane O'Neill, and the kind of like finesse these people have, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like I can ever make my frame do what that body does. Or it's mm -hmm. almost like, you know, music. I mean, I got a guitar sitting over here, I could play a load of stuff. Uh -huh. But I cannot play with a drummer. I've probably messed around for 10 years, I but you. I don't have this gift. I can get better, but uh -huh. to the level that someone, like my daughter picks it up and she can just. So I do think, you know, so for me, front feebles, backsmith didn't work. Um, and yeah, uh -huh. I did a couple back nose buns, kick the back nose buns, but really, you know. My so, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. My yeah. body, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, I tell you, man, oh, man. All right, so, all right, well, well dude, what's, what do you think the best trick you've done is, man? You know, skating probably big rails. Like, um, mm -hmm. I remember being like 15, 16 and nose grinding Wilshire handrail. And that's like a 15 stair handrail. You know, we were skating LA and there's a 10, 11 stair on the other side. This rail became very famous. And I think Chad Musker maybe lip slid it at the time. Nice. And, and, you know, it's a steep rail. So I went and board slid it. Then uh -huh. I lip slid it. Uh -huh. And I nose grinded it, which was crazy uh -huh. for me. And then I guess a lot of kickflip from boards, you know, where I used to switch yeah. switch 185 O's a lot, switch 20 Smiths, and mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff. But I just liked skating rails and stairs, you know, or flat mm -hmm. bars. So, yeah, or, you know, I guess I was really known for salad grinds too. So yeah. I could salad grind almost, I could probably salad grind the rail easily. I could lip slide it, just mm -hmm. all the on, lock it yep. in. Yep. So, yep. yeah. Very Heck cool. yeah. yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool, brother. Man, yeah, that's the, yeah. I mean, and dude, I'm going to be real with you, brother, man. Like, I had a little sponsor in high school and yeah. all that. But, dude, okay. dude, there's no way, dude, there is no possible way, there's no way I would be pro because, dude, like, I, I mean, dude, you know, you got to have balls, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the funny thing is, like, so let's say we're skating and I, I, I I'm in England, and I'm like, I want to go be in America. I want to get boxes of stuff. It wasn't that I wanted to be a pro skater. I just wanted to get better. So right. now I'm seeing a guy in a magazine that's like grinding an H-stair handrail, and you're like, oh, my gosh. And you're realizing that you could fall, you could hit your face, you could do all the rest, you know, and, and so forth. Sorry, the door's just ringing. All the rest of it. So uh -huh. you train yourself to be like, I'm going to learn how to do this at a skate park. Then I'm going to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. And as we were doing this, you get your slams, you get your bails, but you develop a way that you jump out of stuff. So, I mean, there are guys that don't think about that and they break everything. I was super mellow and right. I kind of knew my limits. Like I bought right. a couple of double kinks, but when guys would just hop on them or guys today like, you know, Jamie Foy or Figgy or I mean, mm -hmm. Nigel, it's very crazy. The level of skating, it, it's it's ridiculous, you know, so. Right, 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 insane, man. Yeah. yeah. And, and, dude, I'm going to be, man, I remember, I will never forget, dude, um, you know, Birdhouse, obviously, the end and all yep. that. Yep. 
like you know uh you know my good buddy who i grew up with skating you know yep uh, mike mike letter man i mean me and yep. him we i remember watching you dude you know and yeah like, wow man you know like it so <laughs> you have I mean, you you have no idea how much i appreciate you being on here man in general of course right? and, yeah. and you know for people listening we got to realize that was like a golden age like like because you're how old yeah. you're I'm 34, brother. Yeah, so I'm 41. So the generation before me was like, you know, you had the Dogtown, the kind of pool guys. Then you had kind right. of the whole Vert crew. And then you kind of had our generation. I started around 92. And we were the generation that got like, you know, the end of the Hate Street videos. And we got the 411s. And then we got the skate magazines became our skate Bibles at the time, you know. Right. And so the, the amazing thing is we would go maybe do something in Cali and it would come out in three months, but we'd be trying to do tricks while then pros above us were doing tricks. And then you guys are seeing it. So yep. we were all seeing the same thing at the same time. Yep. So I talk about a guy like, you know, Heath care chart. We yeah. watched it. was like, okay, this guy just lip slid this. Yep. And then two months later, he kick flip back, lip this. And then yep. he back nose one of this. A kid today goes back and watches that and sees two years of footage. And it's like, Oh, I see these kind of tricks all the time now. And yep. they lose that kind of like, yep. you know, the amazing time it was in where everyone was seeing it. It's almost like being, you know, a musician and you hear an album come out and it changed time. Yep. Or I'll say, you know, I don't know if you guys are Star Wars fans. Like, yep. I wasn't a huge Star Wars fan. I liked it. But uh, then when The Mandalorian came out, I was like, okay, <laughs> this is, you know, but we didn't know Boba Fett lived. So watching those episodes up to the point where, where is Boba Fett? Uh -huh. At those days don't exist. Now everyone just knows he's here. Right. So you missed right. that time frame yeah. of what happened. So, yeah. Yeah. Right, that, dude, it, man, it's so cool, man. Like, I mean, of course, <laughs> back then, you know, yeah. of course, Birdhouse, the end, you got misled youth. You got all yep. these, you know. Yeah, zero, all the rest of it, yeah. Right, right, you got all of that, man. It's, yeah, you I, had I, Flip, Zero, I mean, all the Birdhouse. Then you had the Gale, the Chocolate Guys. Then you yep. had the anti-hero Black Label and the rest. And yep. it was, it was just a family, you know, and, yep. and it really is. I mean, as much as I do ministry and travel and that, when I see guys today and um, – it's still all family. It's still, you know, talking to Jeff Rowley yesterday or Sean Sheffy the other day, and uh -huh. you just interact with people like nonstop. So, uh huh, uh huh. It, it, I mean, it, it's, it's like I said, it's a family, it's a religion. You know, skateboarding is, yeah. I mean, you guys are out there in Georgia, you know, with the beards and the camo hats and your chest. <laughs> like, we're skaters, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So. I hear you. I hear you, brother. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know that, like, when, when I was a teenager, my brother's a few years younger than me. Yeah. You know, you know skateboarding was a big part of our life. Yeah. You know, like, we really looked up to guys like you and, and, all, and Tony Hawk and all <laughs> those guys. Yeah. You know, and we would, we'd be on ESPN watching the X games. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you know, we had like <laughs> all the video games. Yeah. You know? And then we would be out in the backyard, you know, just trying to, to skate yeah. and stuff. And you <laughs> I never learned to fall properly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Happened. That's important, yeah. I did karate, so it helped me fall. And then, you know what's funny is I remember there was a Jeremy Ray video, and uh -huh. he was frontside 360 ollie and down Carlsbad. Uh -huh. And when he would land, he would tuck his arms in. And everyone just noticed, and they were like, oh. and I kind of knew, because in, in you know karate, you tuck your arms in. Right. But how many skaters leave their arms out and then snap those things? Yep. So I remember people being like, man, Jeremy slams right. And it's like, yeah. So exactly. <laughs> there's a method to it. But exactly. I got knocked out two or three times. I didn't really break too much. Uh -huh. And I was, re I was actually afraid. You know, it's kind of like the same as going up in Liverpool. Uh -huh. I was afraid to get in a fight and then things would happen. And out of fear, I'd respond. And back to your point even about jumping on handrails, in skating, how do you make yourself, like, like, do you want to jump down 15 stairs today? No, but I want to get this trick down a 15 stair handrail. So I have to trick my mind. And that's kind of where the OCD comes in. So many things. So it's kind of funny, you know, because then you're like, if I do this kickflip, I'm going to go do it. And you've committed in your head enough to the slam and you go cancel it out. Yeah. And like, you know, I think the most famous guy for this was a tennis player called Pete Sampras. Mm -hmm. And he had so much OCD because he wanted to perfect everything that if someone was watching him or he didn't take enough drinks or his socks weren't right, it, it all cancels out. So you can just focus. So yeah. I think we're all kind of maniacs. You know? <laughs>
I mean, I but, but it's a I beautiful art, you know. I mean, I see skating today, and I watch the new guys, and I love it. I mean, I watched probably two things last night, just getting into bed. What's you know what was it? Was it even a welcome video that came out? And I watched those guys and uh -huh. just some of the tricks. The guy did the no side on the rail, two seventy, mm -hmm. and then he like wallied over a wall ride, and I was like, it's sick. Well, yeah. Now forty one, you know, when I'm like two thirty and I'm doing jujitsu more, I'll go cruise around, but I'm not going to jump down a handrail per se. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I hear you, brother. You get a lot more fragile after 30. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, when, when you hit 40, I mean, I'm on, I'm actually on my wife's, I don't even say diet because she eats so good and I, I generally eat bad, I'll just eat whatever. Right. And I've literally this whole week, I've cut out all this soda, all this junk food, anything fast food. I was eating two meals, like a big meal I like to eat. I mean, Jesus always ate, you know what I mean? They were always right. getting fish, right. always the rest. Right. And I noticed this morning I'd lost like seven pounds in like a week. And that just tells you how much junk I'm carrying from uh, soda right. and salt and the rest. So maybe I will <laughs> jump down some rails. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. Yeah. I hear you, bro. Yeah. I hear you, man. You know what, man? I I've noticed, man. Uh, you, you clearly know, dude, in the skateboard world, just the world, man. You know, I I've noticed, dude, like, obviously skateboarding, music, and all that. I've no I mean, you've seen it, dude. There's yeah. a lot of people into freaking Satan. Yeah, you know, and, and, yeah. and my, my mindset is, is, I mean, yours is the same, you know, Yeah, is it's not logical because very simply God created everything good as you yeah. know. Yep. So there's no logic there because yep. he hates skateboarding. He hates music. He hates you. He hates me. He hates yeah. everyone. And you mean Satan. Yeah. Yeah, so, exactly, yeah. Man. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Satan does. So, yeah. I mean, like, it's, it's no logic to that, you know, and that, you know, and that's why, man, you, God bless you for being a good influence to people, man. Because, Thank you. I mean, for real, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, and so those listening saying, what are these guys talking about Satan? Um, it's almost like a, you know, I get this people like, you know, the horns and all the rest of it and, you know, 666, but that's kind of how I was raised. Like, okay, you just live in your life. Not that this stuff's really real. You know, we just evolved. We're mush. Which in itself, the idea could be satanic. You know, people debate the idea of evolution and what it means. But God created man in his image. So right. we know that's the Bible. Right. But when I became a Christian, I began to say, okay, what's this idea of Satan? You look at the, the, the time Satan is throughout the Bible. And in the Hebrew, he's called the adversary. Jesus refers to him as a serpent of all that was in the garden that lied to man. And, and so people think he's got these little horns. He's running around with a pointy tail and a pitchfork. Something silly off, you know, a video game or a comic. But he's not. Mm -hmm. It's real simple. Like God created a bunch of beings, creatures even, some of them. Mm -hmm. And he fell. He rebelled against God. And right. now you have this kind of not war because God wins. Right. But there's sin. And right. to non-believers, when you tell them what... Paul writes to the church in Corinth, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, that mm -hmm. Satan's the god of this age. You're like, what does that mean? Well, it means that right now, God's outside of time, but Satan has this realm to be able to distract and lead us into sin. And like he did with Adam and Eve, he said, did God really say? And so to your point, um, we're, already, we're already sinful. You know, We already fell in the garden. We're going to die. That's evidence. But right. we live in this world where... All of us, the three of us, those listening as well, mm -hmm. we want to sin. Bible says sin's fun for a season. Paul talks about our flesh loving sin. The mm -hmm. things I don't want to do, I do. So we're living in this world where Satan is consistently, and by that I mean his yep. minions, this dominion, its realm, yep. are ministering lies to God's creation, all mankind, and we're buying it. We're distracted by who's on the television, by who's through the airways, by what's happening around us. And even, God says, our own hearts. So here's Brian as a kid being raised. And mm -hmm. everything I'm seeing is a distraction. Is right. football bad? No. It's something we can do and enjoy. But what right. are the influence is going to be like? Is skating bad? No. It's neutral. But what right. are the influence? Is music bad? No. Right. God said all things are made by him, for him, through him, Corinthians. We read yeah. that 1, 16, 17, but Satan gets to tempt and, ta and, and taint these things. So 
things yep. like sex, things like money, things like music, things like skating can be used. Right. And it's not that he turns us away from the light because we're already born in the darkness, right. but it's that we're deceived. And until we come to faith, until our eyes are open spiritually, yep. we don't get it. So I don't know if you even want to go and unpack, you know, how he ministers in this world because that's interesting. But he's definitely, yep. you yep. made the point to our listeners. Yes, yep. Satan isn't, and uh, guys, it's this idea of the adversary, him and fallen angels yep. hate God. They know there's a coming judgment. Read Revelation. Yep. But while they're here, and I'll go as far as to say, I believe this is high levels of government. I believe this is high levels of a cult. I believe the same way you read Genesis and you see people worshiping Molech and Baal, that, mm -hmm. that leaders are still doing this. Mm -hmm. I still believe in the idea of what they do to children, sadly, and because this is all an affront to God, you know? So I would go as far as to say, when God says there's an antichrist spirit, right. if Christ says God is love, Christ lived, died, resurrected, yep. and God's got a picture of marriage, family, community, all mankind is one, then right. Satan is opposed to all of that. Right. And yep. I mean, let's just be crazy. I mean, even for the flat earthers, you know, if the earth really was flat, why would, <laughs> why would we be told it's round? Because, you know, and I'm just saying that to say, I like people just like, what are you talking about, Brian? I get every kind of conspiracy video. I get asked every kind of question. So I'm like, God didn't tell me that. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I'm just like, Lord, well, whatever way, but I'm saying that to say the Antichrist spirit in this world is in opposition to all things God. And that's what's ministering to us from a child to us as adults until we enter the grave. So. That's it, yeah. brother. You, I mean, you, you yeah. got it on the head, brother. Exactly, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, exactly, man. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, obviously, you know, we're metalheads, obviously, here, you know, and, mm -hmm. and like, uh, you know, but obviously it's riddled with Satan. And yeah, and, and it's, it's, it's not, there's no logic to that because the ones that are worshiping Satan and all that, there's no lot. He hates you, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. he wants to rip you apart, you know, so. And even, and even yeah. a lot of Satanists, you know, you got to look at the history. If we look at this, like, you go back to Genesis 6, and these Nephilim come down, you know, these fallen ones. We'll get conspiracy for, the, you know, the ancient angels, peop um, ancient aliens people. But mm -hmm. these are just messengers that come down, and they deceive, and they impregnate women. All this craziness happens in Genesis 6. Right. And you look around the world, and you go, where do all these false religions come from? Where is all the idolatry that's put before us based? Well, it comes from the father of lies, Satan... If yep. God says you don't need it and Satan says you does, that's right. satanic. Not to right. be religious and legalistic, but right. this goes out. And then we see people now who are worshiping him in a way where, where most Satanists, they don't actually even believe he's real. They mm. just believe you are in control, you know, do as thy will. So mm. we just don't want to serve any God. A lot of, a lot of Satanists are atheists or agnostic, right. but then a lot are actually dark and occult. They right. understand the dark arts. Um, right. There's a reason why they're all holding their hands the way I'm not going to hold them and who they're looking right. to and who they're worshiping. Right. And you see this at ceremonies, at halftime shows. I mean, what, the Super Bowl's tomorrow? I watch it just to see right. what the colors of the floor will be, what the placement of the songs will be, and what the message will be. Because people think about brainwashing and programming, mm -hmm. and you just think about someone like Beyonce, not to pick on Beyonce, but... Right. Here's a woman who's a wife and a mom, and she'll go out and dance and dance around right. the pole right. like she's a stripper. Right. And that's the picture of a mom and a woman. And you'll right. hear women say, well, get it, girl. You know, look at her thighs or whatever she is. Or guys will idolize that. But right. you're presenting an image, and that's how culture does it. And now you're seeing this image presented of what a man is, what a woman is, or combining the two. And Satan's just got an agenda to confuse where God says, look, guys, yep. I put you on the earth. I'm outside of time, but you fell, and I'm sending a rescue mission because I love you. Right. Satan does not love. I, I, you know, I have Brian Welch on the show recently. I've had a lot of different musicians. Mm -hmm. I grew up on Iron Maiden. You know, my bands were the Misfits, the Ramones. I mean, yeah. all those bands, which, you know, obviously they're singing about crazy stuff, but they're a little mellow. Where Iron Maiden is fully, you know, you got the, the pyramids, you got the 666 hidden, you got the number of the beast. And I mean, I can play that on guitar. The guy down my street, you know, two doors down, all he plays is metal, the raddest guy. Uh -huh. But, and here's the reality though, any of this is just as satanic as Mary Poppins. And I joke, and I'm saying like, 
I'm just saying, like, you don't have to be that far from God to be already guilty of sin. But then there's those who really want to push him and his agenda. So, and I think Nico McBain from I Am Maiden is actually a Christian. He is. As well, you know, one of the best yeah, drummers yeah. ever. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the drummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, brother. Yeah. 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 But so, uh, if you, uh, what's your favorite band? Yeah, favorite band. You know what? It's crazy because, I mean, if, if I talk about music, like, I like so many just crazy. Like, I grew up listening, like I said. I don't know why why I got into I Am Maiden. You know, I think, you know what? There was a there was a commercial one time on TV for a drink called Lucasade that you don't have here, uh-huh. but it's in, it's English. It's kind of like a Gatorade, and there okay. was a runner called Daily Thompson running, and in that song they had the Phantom of the Opera by I Am Maiden. It was right. like, yeah. <laughs> so I hear it, like, what is this song? And so my friend knows what it is, uh-huh. and his brother has it. So they would just play it over. Like, I love Iron Maiden. So I, I, I only knew the intro. And I'm, I'm going to look it up on YouTube after because I want to remember the commercial and just get the nostalgia. But I started just listening to Iron Maiden. Uh-huh. And then I didn't really get any, you know, Anthrax or Megadeth or all these other bands. Even Metallica. I mean, they're great for skate songs, but I just liked Iron Maiden. Uh-huh. And then my parents, obviously the Beatles and all the rest of it, Pink Floyd, uh-huh. you know, Bob Marley, all the rest. But I liked all the old kind of doo-wop songs with the rhythm. I that's why I ended up, you know, like Dion and all those funny, like Bobby Darin, Dream Lover and that. And uh-huh. that's why I think when I found the Misfits and the Ramones even, uh-huh. there's this kind of like melody to it, but this kind of fast punk feel. But then I'll tell you, I'll confess some stuff. I was in the car the other day, uh-huh. listening to No Doubt with my kids, <laughs> you know? And then I'll tell you, Christmas, I was listening to Mariah Carey on repeat uh, while I was driving, laughing. Um, and then someone, Josh Garrels, was on, and he talked about Gangstar, which I hadn't had in years. So uh, my wife and I fell in love to, you know, the Get Up Kids, Saves the Day, these kind of emo bands. Uh, but I would say the Ramones, the Mis- the Ramones, the Misfits. And here's another confession. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the Bee Gees documentary I on got HBO. I got it's you. crazy. And the brother that you don't know sings has the craziest voice. It's um, Robin Gibb. He has a song, um, I Started a Joke. When you hear this dude sing. So I just, you know, I just appreciate everything. But I can listen to, I didn't get into too much American rock till I got here. You know, more like Neil Young and stuff like that. Like um, Harvest Moon. But on on my list, I'd probably put more doo-wop because it's more mellow. It's not too crazy. If I listen to anything too much that begins to speak dark things, I don't want to listen to it. Mm-hmm. But as far as worship, you know, I, I listen to everything. You know, I love like Passion Band or that song In Christ Alone. And even though people wrestle with Hillsong's doctrine, I can uh-huh. listen to those songs and think about Christ. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. everything, you know, my go to is going to be there's a Christian channel that's teaching or preaching, there'll be songs on. But if mm-hmm. I'm going to put music on, right. it's probably going to be like an oldies mix or. If I'm in the mood, like, all right, you know, <laughs> it's it's Mariah right. Carey. What's that, Mariah? You know what? You know why? But someone put us. I don't know. I'm going on, but if you if you got listeners, they want to probably hear Brian and skating and funny stuff. But I remember someone put out a song saying, "Is Mariah Mariah Carey a Calvinist?" And it was that song, "Be My Baby." And if you listen to the lyrics, it sounds like God's speaking about one of his, you know, you'll always be mine and we'll never part. And so that song got in my head. I got it. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Don't you, edit this out. Let's keep let's keep being home. Mariah Carey, yeah. I got you, man. I got you. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. No, 40, you don't care what people think. No, you know what I mean? I'm like, I don't. No. no. You know, everyone that thinks they're cool is not cool. Trying to think you're cool is not cool. Um, you know, yeah. even skaters, dude, skaters are such jocks. Like, they don't realize it. They're like, everyone, dude, we're so different. No, if you don't fit in the mold of what skaters say, right. it's like they're just right. on you. You know, I mean, oh, look right. at Nigel. Nigel's the gnarliest skater ever. And when yeah. he just came out wearing something a little different, yeah. he got torched for it. Even yeah. Sheckler when he was a kid. Anything yeah. new. And it's like, if we don't fit in the mold, I'm like, I've always had this kind of protection of skating. It's not ours. Like, we're the skaters, yes, but it's anyone's. You know, it's got its core, its integrity. I love that. Skating is so influential, but it's anything. You know what I mean? I mean, look, look at, I mean I, to me, in a way, Mark Gonzalez is almost like skating. Like, 
the genius of who that guy is. You never see a bad photo. Right. He just looks so original. He could be the most fresh hip hop looking funk random, <laughs> but that's yeah. skating. Just let it be what it is, you know. So right, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm preaching about kinda... skating today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind of felt like that's the way metal is too. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. there's no wrong way to do it. Yeah. You know, and you don't have to fit any particular mold. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know. Exactly, man. Yeah. I mean, and so, yeah. what, what, do you guys both play instruments then, or what? Oh yeah. Yeah. So we're both a band together. Yeah. That's yeah. right. So, so what's 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 the instruments you play? Is it? Yeah, he's he's a, he's a bass, and I, yeah. I play uh, for recording wise drums yeah. and guitar and stuff. Awesome. Uh, live will be uh, drums. You know. Yeah. Well. Sick. But, yeah, my uh, youngest drums all the time, and um, my daughter can play guitar, but I just, you know, mess around with stuff. I'll say, you know, you know what I love metal wise, which you guys. I don't even know where they fit into metal, but CKY. Oh, yeah, I got you. I got you. Just the rhythms he would use, mm-hmm. and, you know, and then that's it. So, yeah, but you're saying so metal can be whatever it is because you can have – is guar like death metal? Guar. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean what? <laughs> so, I, so I said that, you know, anybody can be cool in metal, but, you know. <laughs> so give yeah, me, like, I, I give me your guys – to them, too. <laughs> give me your top five um, metal bands then. Like, like, what would you say as metalheads? Uh, what are the top five metal bands? You know, for you personally, for whatever reason, yeah. Just so I can get where you're going with this, yeah. Okay, uh, you can start. Your, you can, go first. Because uh, <laughs> right, so. he wants to think about it and get answer right, yeah. <laughs> all right, so, I mean, well, all right, look, I'll be real with you, my brother. Uh, I, love, I love secular music. Yeah. Now, it's because of the music. You yeah. Know mm-hmm. It's not what they're singing about. It's yeah, music, and that, and, that's and you've got to be able to know that, and then step back. Exactly, and it's like it's like anything. It's like you can listen to something. Like if you listen to hip hop, and you listen to like Nas, and I'm not a hip hop guy, but uh, when I lived with Andrew Reynolds, Jim Greco, and I listened to it all day, right? I was right. like, well, if it's in the car, it's playing. I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out what's going on. And you listen to Biggie or Tupac or Nas, they're mm-hmm. lyricists. You hear them sing about their life. Mm-hmm. Like Nas has that song "Represent." If you don't know what's going on, you're thinking it's just about shooting, doing drugs, and the rest. Right. Why are you going to want to listen to this? How does it glorify God? But when you say as an artist how amazing it is, you get it. So you're saying, yeah, you, you get right. – you're not for the message, but right. you appreciate the sound. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like like my favorite's Blind Guardian. They're uh, from mm-hmm. Germany. You know? Okay. So Germany's got a heavy from- metal influence, huh? Yeah, man, and yeah. like I mean, I I love eighties metal. I'm old. School. Yeah, yeah. You know what okay. I mean. So Iron Maiden, you mentioned. <laughs> I mean, they're awesome crap. Yeah. You know? But uh, Blind Guardian, old Metallica, eighties Metallica. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Testament. They're yep. all eighties. Everyone. I'm yeah. Into, you know? Yeah. Uh, Annihilator, stuff like that. You know. Wow. But it's, it's but the reason I like it is like I said, yeah, it's the music though, because it's different than like a Christian metal. Like the yeah. style is different. Yeah, yeah. Like, like Striper yeah. or something? Yeah, I like Striper, yeah. 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 What is that, the song Yahweh or something? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. I used yeah, to yeah. wake the kids up. The kids wouldn't be getting up, and I'd go put it on, and I would play it. And it's like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and they would get out of bed and be so bummed. So. I hear yeah, you. Okay. I hear you, buddy. And, uh, what'd, you, what'd you get? Honestly, my favorite band isn't even a metal band. It's really just Pink Floyd. Yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and then... Nowadays, I'm just pretty much into symphonic metal. Anything that's symphony symphonic. Style. Yeah. Metal. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. So what what bands would that be like? What the style well, would that be? the big one, the biggest one would be Nightwish. Okay. Wow. European. Yeah. European. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There's wow. Nightwish. Within, Within Temptation. temptation like, yeah. Delane. Sirenia. Mm-hmm. Sandria. Huh. I mean, there's even like there. Finland and Sweden, they have they all yeah. are Norway, right? Huh? Exactly, yeah. right? Exactly, <laughs> because you but know, then, my, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, bro. No, go ahead, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Good I really point. appreciate all the 80s stuff like he does too. I mean, I'm totally but what's your that. favorite Pink Floyd, Pink Floyd song then? Oh, <laughs> I know it's cliche, but comfortably numb, yeah. I mean, it is, know. it is crazy, like, and I'll say this. Um, and this is just randomly off topic, but we'll pull back in. I remember being on a plane and coming back from somewhere, obviously, a flying. And mm-hmm. this is when Lady Gaga was blowing up. 
and it was playing on repeat like on the plane mm -hmm. and it was that song like Poker Face uh -huh. and so it just had been on like 50 <laughs> times uh -huh. but I was like it's like there's like a dark anointing on it like there's like a power in the way it's set you know what I mean <laughs> so I know how music can have that influence and I listen to like Pink Floyd and I'm like man there's something about Comfortably Numb Right. Like, like my wife is, you know, like a music snob. I mean, she is a straight edge kid. And I mean, she's 43. So she was around in that day when it was, you know, Gorilla Biscuits and Minor Threat and all that stuff. And she knew all those guys. Right. But when, she never listened to Pink Floyd that much because she's straight edge. So, so you don't get stoned or drink. And when she had come to be home, she's like, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, if you listen to that with like the lights off in a room, the sound and what it does and musically, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's crazy, you know, and then obviously their messages, even though I think you listen to David Gilmore speak or Roger Waters, and I mean, they are brilliant. You know what I mean? Why right. they wrote stuff, what happened, Sid Barrett went a bit crazy, but um, right. I guess because my sisters just grew up, you know, in, in in Liverpool, you know, let's say it's five o'clock at night right now and we're all friends, what are we going to do, do? If you're going to go play soccer or you're going to go sit in the graveyard and like, you know, drink some beers or... or and like my sister and her friends would just run off to the graveyard and they would just like drink a bottle of wine and listen to Bob Marley and, you know, Pink Floyd. So I almost associated those things with like, OK, that's more crazy. But then as I got older, I was like, OK, I could really get. And then obviously skating huge. Um, I had, a, I had a, a board graphic that was a wish you were here board. That was oh, okay. when when I wasn't a Christian, I was coming to faith and uh -huh. it was me shaking my own hand. And I was on fire. And when you look back now, you're like, listen, as I was coming to faith, it was crazy. I had an exorcist board where I was outside the building looking in like the cover of exorcist. Mm -hmm. They had a wish you were here, like one version shaking my other hand and I'm on fire. Then you have the Christian version where then, then you know, I had Mary because I didn't get the theology yet. Then I had Christ. But right. yeah, Pink Floyd. I mean, that's kind of hard to talk Pink Floyd, you know, actually. <laughs> So, I mean, you then, mentioned a couple of numb. Yeah, I mean, that guitar solo at the end is classic. Yeah. So he's that good, right, David Gilmore? Yeah. People are like he's a freak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. dude, dude, you yeah. play guitar, dude. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> I know. I play Wish You Were Here, but I can't get into the, the solos and stuff. And I just say CKY because those rhythms mm -hmm. he plays, like that song "Testing" and stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I love that kind of. Nice. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Heck yeah, sweet, sweet, sweet. So then, so then now is metal, is it a whole different style like in Europe? Like, is there going to be like an Iron Maiden again or is it like that's, <laughs> uh, I mean, Bruce Dickinson's a freak, you know, what he can do with his voice. And, oh, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't I know tell if you, you that, yeah. that metal is way different in Europe than America. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay, I yeah. mean. We both miss, love European. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I pretty much dismiss most American metal. Because I, I just really don't like the vocal styles. We're yeah. Yeah. You know, where yeah. it's just screaming and growling the whole time. And, right. Yep. And like, I, it's just not for me. It's not and, for yeah. me. Yeah. Right, right. But yeah. you listen to a lot of uh, European bands, they're not mm. doing that. It's singing. Yeah. Singing. Okay. Right. You know, actual singing, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the. Um, it's so funny how you watch stuff and not so late you realize why am I why am I thinking this why am I watching it but there's like those voice coaches and there's one that's to Bruce Dickinson like hello be the name right and there's like four women have done this now when you listen to it and they've never heard the song and they're like oh my gosh and they're these women and they keep replaying it and you know when he says um you know, I'm waiting at the cold door and he unpacks it and they're saying the way Bruce Dickinson sings, he shouldn't be able to do that because he does it long right. and he does it -na 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 -na, yeah. and he could just do it. So that's like, you know, he should have been singing opera, but I don't think he'd, he'd have made as much money, you know, flying his, his um, 747 around. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. Do you think Iron Maiden or Metallica are the biggest metal? Like, What's the biggest metal band ever? Is it one of those two? Metallica. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And it's just a little bit yeah. darker, the tone. Yeah. Right, right, right. I, I do like the heavy stuff, but but like when I like when I write, right, everything has to be logical. It has to yeah. be. So yeah. if it's a heavier, aggressive sound, I love the galloping. Yeah, like the trooper or something, or Ace is high. Right. Yeah. Right, like if, if it's doing that, it's got to be logical. So yeah. it's got to be a warring. So in my mind, it's archangels go against demons. 
You know, yeah, so yeah. I mean, logic. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, like to me, if you're sitting there galloping fast, yeah. But then you're saying Jesus loves me. Well, yeah, he does, but <laughs> like it doesn't. You might want to <laughs> slow it down. No yeah, you got to slow it down then. You know, do a ballad, a ballad sound. You know? So music, the well, and it's true because if you put on the Four Horsemen by Metallica. Yeah. You feel like the four horsemen are showing up. <laughs> or what's that? Was it a Sabbath song? What was that Sabbath um, about salvation or something? What, do you remember that song? Um, and I think one of the guys in there is a Christian, so they wrote it. Oh, okay. But it is insane. Cool. Oh, man. I'll, I'll remember it by before the end of the episode. But I yeah, so it. you're saying when you write, here's this part. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, just, I, I just like things making sense, you know? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, um, but Which yeah, a lot of songs nowadays don't. Yeah. No, no. So have you sent him links to some of our stuff to listen to? Yeah, man. If you ever want to check yeah. out the stuff. You'll have to uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, That's I got an cool. uh, EP out. Uh, okay, Lake, good. Uh, Majestic yeah. Kingdom. Yeah. Um, so it's Slip Trick Records, you know. Um, but yeah, dude, I mean, you know, I, name, it's, I, I write instrumental music, you know. Yeah. But, you know, I love the music, you know. So, you know, I'll get influenced by the secular, and then I yeah. take that, and then yeah. I put God in there. Yeah, and yeah. And giving God the glory, because... Uh, and that's the hard yeah. thing, because even when yeah. I had Josh Garrels on, you know, or, or Brian Welch, yeah. a lot of times what we do is we say, well, am I Christian or secular? And it's like, just be you, and if you want to write about your love life or the craziness of politics, I mean, I wouldn't do that if I were you, but I'm saying... right. right. Or you want to go full on, I want this to be a worship song to God. You get to do that. The difference is when, and this is what, you know, Josh Garrel said very respectfully. He talked about like a, a documentary in the 80s where this secular couple went and interviewed all these Christian bands. And I think Joy Division was there, he said, or New Order. Mm -hmm. And they asked them and said, do you know these guys are Christians? Mm -hmm. And they literally said, look, we know they are. But there's right. a game between us where every day when we're in the green room, we try and ask them questions to get one of them to say they're Christian because they don't want to say it. And part oh. of Josh's thing is like, if we're trying to win the will with some of the way, and he gets, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a way the Christianity is presented where if you guys had hated God growing up and your parents were opposed to and you'd seen them be shamed for, you know, everything else, right. you would hear of a Christian thing and look down on it. And he right. goes, but what we get to do is to just go be us. I mean, Josh Garrels makes music. Brian Welch makes music. Yep. You guys are making music that we love the Lord, and it's more about your life. Right. So when you, right. so if you, right. so Metallica calls you and says, I "Want you yeah. to go on tour and open for us?" I mean, right. are you going to fall off your chairs? Right. But aren't you going to go? And aren't right. you going to just be you? And if you're kicked right. off the band because you're suddenly, but that's not how God works. See, God will use those circumstances as the ministry yep. where we think. We have to have platinum selling albums and the whole world says, this is the greatest Christian album ever. It's like, no, God can do that, you know, but it's more like just write and be you and talk and let you, you know, I mean, that's it. And I think we, and that was Josh Garrell's point. We try and put a stamp on it and say, this is the method. And like, no guys, the gospel is the power and the salvation, but I like metal music or like for me, I go to jujitsu. Do right. I stop every guy on the mat when I'm about to submit him and say, you better repent, sinner, you know what I mean? Or whatever. <laughs> no, but I go there as a pastor. Right. My professor wants me to pray with people at times. I'm who I am. Right. I'm in a metal realm. You guys are. I asked right. Brian Welch that question, you know, how right. do you reach people? And he just said, I'm just me. They, they've read my book or they've heard my story. They might even read his book and disagree with God. But they right. take from it that he's clean today and not obsessed with money and fame. Right. And and then there's the witness. So that's exactly. cool. So you write with those ideas. That's funny. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, there's it, Jesus yeah. and then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I mean, and we also have another EP out, uh, which is a side project band, Solid yeah. Virtue. And, okay. You know, and, and you mentioned earlier, in fact, yeah. you know, I, I wrote the lyrics to that and, you know, against false gods. There's a lot of crap out there, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah, one of the songs against false gods. You know, I mean, you know, it, and that's it, what I would do. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I would just take. You know what's funny is if you listen to um, Christian rap, I mean, black rappers, mm -hmm. they kill it with theology. Like my youngest son, for whatever reason, he just heard hip hop and beats, and he just loves it. And he mm -hmm. listening to all these guys like Shaylin and stuff. 
mm-hmm. and they're singing about all this theology, and he doesn't even know what the theology is yet, but he's you right. know eight and nine, he's singing it, and right. I'm like, if that's if that's what they're all doing, right. and they can use that, not that not that you're gonna write metal songs and have to talk about expiation and all the you know appreciation, right. but <laughs> if there's a story there, right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it? Uh... God told Moses to write a song so people yeah. remember. Write a new song. I mean, that's what they did. They wrote songs. They sang. And I mean, I, I'm trying to think of that Aussie song. When you hear it, he lays out the gospel. It's oh, funny, okay. so It's very yeah. crazy. Yeah. Oh, man. That's it, man. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, I, I can't say it enough, man. I mean, you yeah. really are an a awesome influence on people, man. I mean, you're a good man, you know, and I know you love the Lord, you know, and you know, you give him the glory, and just just like it says in the Word, Old and New Testament, clear as yeah. it says, as you know, it gives yeah. God the glory in all you do, you know? I mean, it's everything. And that's what Paul thing. said, you're, you're to boast in Christ. So yeah. sometimes Christians think we've got to be so quiet, and I'm like, and I know how much of a kook I am. I know the things I fight with my wife about, or I get frustrated, or the sin I wrestle with. I mean, that's everyone. Right. You know, but I'm not trying to live this life. Like, I'm going to go intentionally run off and do this today or that. But I should be able to say, Lord, if you're using the platform you gave or using these gentlemen's music right. or using a podcast, yes. I mean, Paul talked about his testimony every time he wrote pretty much. He affirmed what God did. He uses gifts. And I go, that's all we got to do. A lot of Christians are stepping back like, what's the world going to think of me? It's like, guys, just go. Right. You know what I mean? And right. we're the ones with the good news. We're the ones with the – listen – We have the most powerful force, the person of the Holy Spirit in us. I mean, I remember doing this film. You know, I I know my podcast is called Foolishness, but I made a movie years ago called Foolishness, and it was a skate film. Um, I remember just saying, Lord, we're done with this show we're doing, me and some pastors. What do you want me to do? And I felt like God just handed me it, and I said, Lord, help me write it. And within like a few hours sitting on the couch in the other room, I wrote this basic outline and it became a little film and it won like a couple of awards and not like it made all this money and that we got like 50,000 copies out. Right. But I'm like, if I was writing, I'd be like, Lord, help me with these rifts. What would you play? You know, what would the angels play? And back yeah. to your point about Moses, write songs to God. And we're past that generation now where you can't play drums loud or double bass or guitar. <laughs> I mean, why not? You know right. what I mean? And not right. to go throw right. rocks at them. It is a different time. Right. If you can hear the lyrics, so right, yeah, right, right. and and that's the thing that that is the super cool thing, man. As you know, yep. like no matter what subject, you know, you're you're in the skateboard world. You yep, know, we're in the metal world, but no matter yep. what subject, literally God is there using someone, and that's yeah, he'll amazing. redeem it. Yeah. yeah, 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 and that's the cool thing, man. Like you know, <laughs> it matter. That, it's really cool, you know, like you know. Well, there's a, there's a UFC fighter called Khabib, and I seen something today, you know, and, and my vice, if there's anything, it's like MMA. I just love, you know, I know a lot of those guys, my friend's fighting today, I'm going to go run some errands after this, come back, and because it's a Saturday, I'll probably, even to get a workout, just just w- in this room, I don't go to a gym, you know, I don't want to see all these women in spandex and guys, all everything like that. I mean, me and my wife do everything in the house, but while I'm watching it, my buddy's fighting, but this quote today was from a guy who's in rehab, on drugs, struggling with life. Right. And there's a very famous fighter you might have heard of just called Khabib Namargamedov, a Russian guy. And he's, he's, you know, he's amazing, but he's worth hundreds of millions now. But he goes to a rehab and he speaks to 50 men, which isn't a lot. But the guy in there said, you know, and it just clicked for me. He mm-hmm. said, you know... It's what he's saying, but it's also the platform he has. Now, as a pastor, I say, no, 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 no. It's all God's word and God's spirit, and it is. But the point is, if you walked in there that day and said, I want to talk to you about drugs, 50 men, five could be like, all right. But if it's this guy at that time who's a national treasure, he's a very most famous you know, Muslim um, UFC athlete, mm-hmm. his platform, they paid attention. And God's mm-hmm. the one who wakes us up. But my point is to this. If it was the guy in Metallica just came to faith and just said, I want to have a right. song on the album, it's me talking about my faith, right. God's right. going to use that. And to your point, yep. people listening, guys, whatever you want to do. Yep. I mean, I have a friend who's a fireman, and he's got a business, and he has another business. He's like, I want, you know, I want to pastor one day. I go, just pastor now. You're right. a fireman. You see people every day you're never going to see again. 
You know, you're you're playing solos at a show. Brian yeah. Welch had the same thing. After the show, I go yeah. hang out with people. Yeah. They let their guard down because they trust me or we've yeah. connected. That's what Paul did at Mars Hill. I'm trying to just see while you're even talking about that Sabbath song. I totally forgot <laughs> what it was. Yeah. yeah. I think it was called Something After. You heard like, it. Oh, man. Yeah, I hear you. I, mean, I know what it is. I know it. Familiar with oh, it's, yeah, called, it. it's called After Forever. It's okay. called After Forever. Okay, okay. we'll check that one out. Yeah, we're gonna check yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys will be tripping. I'm oh, telling sweet. you. Sweet, sweet, sweet. <laughs> sweet. It's good. Okay, I was almost gonna text my buddy Josh then to see what it was. <laughs> he starts off and he says, "Have you ever thought about your soul? Can it be saved?" Is God just a thought within your head? Is he a part of you? Is Christ just a name you read in a book? And then he goes off. He goes yeah. off on. I won't play it because of copyright. <laughs> I don't uh, want to get it taken down. But right. after forever. And, and uh, that's, I believe, okay. the drummer or one of the guys that said, I want to have this in here. And it's an amazing song. If I skated today, put a video out. Yeah, I would skate to that. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Sweet, Go man. On. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. And, you know, and that's, that's the cool thing, dude. That really yeah. is really cool, though, man. Like what you're doing, what we're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, what what I find is really cool, though, and, and just like the word says, like Jesus himself said it, go out mm-hmm. into the world. Yeah. You know, like yep. too many people have the mindset of like you have to go to the building, and if you don't go to the building, church, oh, my God, God forbid. Like, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. Out, I'll go out there. Yeah. You know? You yeah, know what I mean, like, and that's what we're all exactly. doing. We're all doing that, you know. And so, that's how God set it up. I mean, He gave, yeah. you know, whether people say the fivefold ministry or not, you know, the apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. So, where's the pastor going to be? He's going to be tending the sheep in the building. Mm-hmm. But where's the evangelist going to be? He's going to be mm-hmm. challenging the church, and they're going to be going out. So, if no one's going out, no one's coming in. And sadly, what we've done is we, we've divided it where we're like, hey, you've got to go to church. Well, you do because Hebrew says don't to say gathering together, but that can be in your basement. It can, right. you know, a guy right. the other day said, well, what about all these pastors with, you know, $2 million buildings, you make 50K a year. And I'm like, right. I'm like, our church doesn't even have a building, but if it did, I know how hard people work. Why wouldn't they make 60, 75? Why wouldn't they make 100? Th- like, why are we putting a standard on it? Well, my right. point is... It needs to go out. God has done a work in skating. I believe there's probably so many people in metal. I yep. see the work he's doing in jujitsu. So yep. Yep. there yep. is a mindset. Keep it in the church. Well, hey, the pastor's there. The teacher's there. But the evangelist and the people. You know, and, and you, if you have listen to some of the podcasts I do, I'll ask whether it's, you know, I think I spoke to 100,000 people once in South Dakota. And right. I asked them, how many of you guys are in ministry? You uh-huh. know, and like probably 50 people put their hands up. Uh-huh. I said, well, how many of you guys are Christians? Right. If half those people put their hands up, that's how many people are in ministry. Because, you know, exactly. Exactly. you're the guys in ministry yep. in this band doing what you're doing. And right. one of you is going to be more of a teacher or pastor or more of an evangelist. But it all needs to go together. So right. gather gather with believers. So we're getting I, – I, I haven't talked about metal in my whole life like this. So here we are. Likewise, yeah. when we go to church – we're right. thinking about Jesus. We're thinking about communion. We're thinking about our struggles. But right. then we go live it out. So, yeah. Right, right, right. And that's why, I mean, I've, I've seen stuff you do. And that's why it's so awesome, man. Because, I mean, truly, I can't say it enough that you're an amazing influence. Thank you, man. Uh, you know, well, the, the Lord. Oh, you, God. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you, know? <laughs> you know, all the stuff I've been through, he who's forgiven much, love much. When you've been, you know, married, divorced, suicidal, and come to faith. And it's crazy. So it's a different Right. Just my days are different, you know, what I want to do. I loved skating, and it was everything to me. And then when you come to faith, you're like, man, I want all these people to know. And I can only imagine with you guys, I mean, right. skating's no different than metal or jiu-jitsu. Right. Even the bands you're naming, most of them I haven't heard because they're so new. You know what I mean? I've been busy doing a bunch of other stuff, but right. that's your community. That's your people. What right. was the band that sang um, Do Hast? What was that? Oh. Thing? Uh, <laughs> Ramstein. Ramstein. Yeah. Where does Ramstein fit into everything? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> are they metal or <laughs> what? <laughs> what do they do? I mean, are they still going? Because they're super uh, famous because uh, yeah, that song. Still, huh? They're still around. They're still going. <laughs> I remember our cousin, and for whatever reason, we were. You know, you know what it was? It was when I would ride for audio, uh-huh. and 
I was around Bam Margera loads, and he loved. He was obsessed with him. Right. And they had a really good song, or the music was amazing. I mean, well put. But then Ramstein would be in one of his things. Uh -huh. I remember it being on TV in one of the, the one of Bam's shows, and uh -huh. our little cousin who was like literally one was uh -huh. in the baby thing, and he's nodding his head. And from the age of like one till like five. We would put it on as a, you know, obviously, you know, back then we were believers, so when he, and it doesn't matter, but I'm just saying, and he would just be like, do, he would just say do as a little kid, and it got, it got <laughs> in his head pretty much, so. Uh, here's the, the rhythms, thing. though. Yeah. Yeah, good. I hear you, bro. I hear you, man. Oh, yeah, they, they had great rhythms in that band. That's what yeah. I think set some up, you know, is that they got great rhythms. Mm -hmm. they know how to, and that's what, as you're talking about it, I'm just thinking about that song in Transylvania, you know, dun, 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 dun. and that's one of the songs I always play. I'm like, I should have just have my guitar messing around. So. I hear you, bro. I hear you, man. I hear you. Good. Dude, like, um, all right, dude. Uh, you know who also came back and really good influence too. Uh, now he was a big influence on mine with skateboarding back then. Was James Tom. You know? Yeah, of course. You know yeah. what I mean, but he seems like. I mean, you know him. I mean, he, you know. Yeah, we did an episode about 15 episodes ago, um, and James, you know. The thing with Jamie is, and he'll tell you, um, like all of us, we're perfectionists. You know, you want to make the best album or do whatever. But right. he got launched into skating and was very driven, coming from Alabama and I think parts of Florida. Uh -huh. And so he just had to handle so much. He blew up. Right. I believe he always had faith as well. Like he always knew and had faith in God. But, you know, right. suddenly your album takes off. You're writing new songs or you're getting this much money or whatever. Right. And so he would say, man, I just got distracted a couple of those years. Right. But now, um, yeah, I mean, for the last, I'd say like at least decade, it seems like he's very, you know, I don't want to talk for Jamie, but right. I know he's very focused on his faith, on his family, looks at how he approaches everything differently. Right. And, and he talks about, you know, skating was just like a drug for me. Like, it's a good thing, but right. after a video part, I'd need the next thing. But now, yeah, I mean, he, he ties a lot of it back to his dad, his relationship and wrestling with acceptance, um, which is crazy. Because, right. I mean, yeah, we talk probably at least text every week or two or something like that, you know, and he's a good dude. And, and his episode really reached people because he has got such a massive platform. Like, he's right. probably one of the most top 10, I mean, you'd even say top five influential skaters in the last 20 years. Right, you know, right. Zero, yeah. Mystery, Fallen, Mercury, I mean, all the things he did, but, but right. that can rob you of your peace. Right, you know, you're right, just going, right. and I'm sure even I'm sure even for you guys, you hear these metal musicians who aren't Christians who say the same thing. They're just exactly. not satisfied. They're chasing the world. So, right, man. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And that's it. Yeah. I think sometimes we think we've got to explain the whole Bible to everyone. Like we don't. We got to know what the gospel is. I mean, the demonized guy who was beating everyone up in chains mm -hmm. came to faith, mm -hmm. and Jesus didn't even. He said, "Don't follow me." He literally said, "No, you're going to stay here." And he went and told people, and there's pretty much a revival happening or the woman at the well he told her about her five husbands and she ran back to the town and said come meet a man and people came to faith so if we know what the gospel is you know that, that none are good all are wicked that we need to be forgiven of our sin that we've all sinned yep. and that christ died and resurrected for our sins and yep. is alive today yep. and we need to repent yeah exactly. that's a myth and, I, and i'll yep. tell you i literally if i was sitting right now with you know, whoever it would be from Metallica or Bruce Dickinson or anyone, right. you know, Ramstein, whoever that guy is, I'd just be like, look, yeah. here's the difference, man. We're both going to die, and God says it's because of our sin. Have you ever sinned? Well, yeah. I did yeah. this and this. Have you ever blasphemed? I blaspheme on my album all the time. Right. Do you ever sleep with chicks? I sleep with all these chicks. Right. Okay, well, that's called sin in God's eyes. Oh, I don't agree right. with God. Well, of course you don't. You're right. not God. But what God did was, because we were doing this and we didn't know, he sent his son to die in our place and we can really receive that. Or yep. Yep. we're still guilty and we're going to be judged. And that's, there's the gospel. And right. that guy or that whoever right. that just gave me that two minutes of their time. Right. Now, they want to stone me and kill us and whatever else. Jesus said that would happen to it sometime. But right. Right. Your, your life should be better. Even if they don't want to, I'm still going to be on tour with that guy. I'm still going to be loving that guy. Your life should be better because I'm in it because I'm called to love you. Yep. Not judge you. You're already condemned, John 3.18 says. But right. there's a rescue right. mission. And, and I even get cocky and say, you know, I'm in your life because God's, God's going to save you. I'm in your life because God's speaking to you. You have to deal with God now, huh? And it's, it's funny, but then they think, is this God? 
and right. his word speaks. So. <laughs> right, right, exactly, man. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah, exactly, bro. Did you see the Kenneth Copeland videos with the metal guy from Australia? <laughs> oh, that was so good. I like it. I like it, man. But be honest, Kenneth Copeland had a good singing voice, right? You say it. <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 no. And then the guy could go, go, go. The wind of God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, the okay. wind of God's a good, good uh, band name right there. The wind of God. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's man. a feel yeah. good. That's gonna come out in a few years. Yeah. <laughs> I, hear you, I hear you, my brother. Yeah. Any other stuff good. you guys are thinking? Yeah. But yeah, man, dude, brother, man, I look. Both of us. I mean, you have no idea how much we appreciate you being on with us. Of course, anytime. I mean, for real, man. You know. I mean, yeah, but I, guest I, bails, or you're like Brian. You're driving to San Diego. Can we jump on a call? I mean, we have today. You know what I mean? We don't know what tomorrow holds, and like. Right. Let, let's reach the metal world. I mean, I don't know. I am an evangelist. I know that. So when someone's like, right. we're going to get airtime out there, let's go. You right. know, what else am I going to do? Watch TV? Like, I like right. watching TV. There's nothing wrong with that. But right. like, you right. put an opportunity up. Let's talk about Iron Maiden. Because yeah. listen, let's be real. Yeah. People listening to this might hate their life right now, hate their dad, hate themselves, be depressed going through a divorce, all this craziness. Guys, I know we're sitting here and we're goofing off to our listeners. I was at the top of my game skating, making great money, riding for Tony Hawk, married with the kid, and I was divorced. And as I said earlier, then I was suicidal, then I was divorced, and I challenged all the religions. I'm not just quoting this because I was raised in the church. I wasn't for 24 years. Then I came to faith. My ex-wife came to faith. We were remarried, and my son is 20 now. I have two more children. And yes, I pastor. I do a lot of outreach and ministry. I still skate, but I enjoy playing my guitar. I enjoy jujitsu. I live my life. I'm fine. If persecution comes and we have to die, that's fine. But right now, in America, with the chaos of who's president and not, with what was signed the other day, you know, a massive bill funding abortions around the world, we're seeing... Right. With the craziness of the world, I'm just here to say, man, right. do you know Jesus? Right. Not the white guy you see in Hollywood, you know, for the last 60 years, the Jewish carpenter that God is wrapped in the flesh, that lived a perfect life yep. so that my sins could be nailed to the cross. That's it. Yep. That God's using this podcast and he reaching you through these gentlemen and praise God because he's a good loving father and you don't deserve all this. We don't. We don't even care about God growing up. But he loved us so much, he made a way that we could say yes and, and write metal and play the drums and all that double bass stuff that I can't play to the glory of God. Sing about Amen. your relationships, Absolutely. sing about your struggles, write poetry, give God the glory. Amen. That's it. You know, Paul Amen. made tents, did it to the glory of God. So. Amen, brother. You, you yeah. couldn't have said it any better, my friend. <laughs> You've definitely been inspiring today. You know, Thanks, you, you guys. You, yeah, man, you're a good man. <laughs> and, and honest to God, I, you know, I, like I told you, I remember watching the end. I remember watching videos with you. You know, uh, <laughs> my, my buddy Mike and I were growing up, you know, like, you know, we were, yeah. you know, I, I, honest to God, thank you, man. <laughs> you know, for taking the time to talk. Of course. You know? I will say this. It's funny in case, you know, skaters jump on it. I, I I almost, when I came to faith, it was like, I didn't focus, you know, I had to restore my marriage. So could I go travel all over the world? Like, yeah, I could, but it probably wasn't smart. And God wanted me to focus on my marriage and my kids. So I kind of backed away a lot. I still skated. I rode it out for a few more years. But when I go places today, a lot of times skaters are like, it's like seeing Bigfoot. Because, you know, I was 160 with black hair, Union Jack flag, all this kind of, you know, I, I skated to... You will know us by the trail of the dead, which is like a yeah. fast song, and we're just cussing in it. The right. Jeff Rowley said you should skate to this, uh, but now when I see people like, wait, you're in town, why? Oh, you're going to that church to speak? Oh, right. you're doing this. So I'm saying that to say to any skaters that are catching this, either Brian Sumner went crazy or God is real. You know right. what I mean? And I'll tell you, this many years later, at 41, as we get older, family matters, our kids matter, life matters. And skating won't save us. Music right. won't save us. Right. Only God will. So, man, for people out there that I can encourage, if it's friends of mine from the skate world, if it's, if it's metal guys that hear this, 
I mean, I put out a marriage book to help people. I do the podcast to reach them. I want to make use of my time like this, you know. I mean, I know it's only been an hour, but we got into a lot of fun stuff that I, even if you call back and say, I have 10 crazy questions, let's just go wherever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we got to talk about Black Sabbath and a song where Ozzy sings about Jesus. How many times you hear that on a podcast? Right, right, so, right. It's just, right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> after, right. What's it called? After Forever? It is, yeah. You guys have to listen to it. Right after this, we're going to listen to I'm going to learn it. I'll play it for the intro on next time we're on. So. <laughs> I love it. I love it, brother. Yeah. So, uh, you're definitely going to have to, to get in touch here with Stephen and let him know about uh, all your projects and things that's going yeah. on. So, that, so if people want to know about that, you know, yeah. we'll post it up like in the description, you know, like links yeah. to the site. And, mm -hmm. and, yeah. And yeah. I, I asked I ask the guest the same thing. And, you know, for me, it's just briansumner.net. Is being redone right now. I do the Foolishness podcast. I pastor out here. Like I'll jump in the pulpit and help out. But really, I I raise full time support. Like I'm basically an urban missionary where I'll get emails to go to Virginia, and then I'm going to uh, Massachusetts, and then I'm sitting with a couple. Then I'm doing a marriage ceremony. So I'm like, Lord, whatever you want to do. And it sounds crazy. I wouldn't tell anyone to do that. Right. But that's kind of the office of an evangelist. Right. It's more like the church saying. We want you to come on this podcast. Right. Can you do a wedding tomorrow? So people connect with me, however, I'll send you the links. But anyone listening, I mean, reach out to any of us, you guys, me, anyone that's going through it right now and needs someone to talk to, you know, message all of us because uh, God loves you. We love you. But, man, you need to see that you're made in his image on purpose. And right. I lost, you know, one of my son's favorite skaters about three weeks ago, two weeks ago. Dude, 21-year-old kid, amazing Listen, I'm just going to say this because, you know, we can do this. It's your podcast. But I watch skating and then my son's like, oh, this guy's so good. My son's only 10. And so he's watching videos of this guy. We go to the skate park and we skate. And as we're leaving, he's like, dad, dad. I'm thinking like, you know, aliens or, you know, fallen angels are showing up. What's going on? And there's a few like pro-am skaters showing up. And this guy's one of those kids. And so I'm, you know, the good dad. So I'm going to. I'll, I'll sit in traffic for this. I go back over to the park, and I go over to the corner, out the way. I just want him to have his moments. Right. And he goes up there all shy, and he's looking at me. And he <laughs> skates with him, and this kid he looks up to is ripping this bowl. And yeah. then Jude drops in, and then they connect and talk. And yeah. that kid was so influential to my kid that day. Man, yeah. went out of his way. The sweetest kid absolutely ripped. I yeah. watched so much of his stuff afterwards, and yeah. then two weeks ago, I find out he took his life. Oh, That's crazy. Man. Yeah. But how common is this for us? You yeah. know what I mean? And I'm like, that kid, and, yeah. I, and his dad had posted, and I went and wrote that story and said, do you realize that to my kid, that my kid came in this room, these doors behind me, right. and said, dad, dad, he's dead. And I didn't tell him how he died. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, yeah, he just died. I go, no way. And right. so that kid in that instant that felt that, it's right. something happened in his life, something happened to his body, something happened to his mind. Right. That, that is not God's will. You know, you'll right. never see a Jewish suicide bomber. The right. Jews, God's people, knew right. we don't take our life. It's up to God. I know Amen. as men, as men, we all face this. We all doubt so much we take on. There's that chemical, what is it, cortisone or something that reacts. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. You know, listen, uh, people. I mean, I wish that kid could be here. I wish right. I could tell him that alone. And, you know, so right, right. good story, dark story, but it's important. Right. You know what I mean? Like redeeming it out of the dark. So, right. yeah. Right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course, you guys. I mean, like you yeah. said, man, and, you know, I, I hate, I hate yeah. suicide because, like you said, it is not God's will. Period. Yeah. He yeah. doesn't, you know, like I said, finish the race. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, you yeah. Know, there, there's True. no matter what, as you know, you've been through a lot of crap. You know. Yeah. You know. I've felt and, suicidal many times. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I mean, as you, I mean, dude, you know, like, there's uh, no matter what the problem is, as you know, you know, like you can eat, you can get out of that problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. And how many kids at 18 to 21, when they're getting out of high school and they're told of this, told of that, shame this, think this, wrong thinking? Right. And they get older and they get a different job or get married or have kids like, oh, because your life, I mean, you're basically like five different people throughout your life. I said this the other week, but, you know, we all hit puberty. We got a little bit hairier. We changed. But I think that happens when you're like, you know, late 20s, late 30s, 
40s, I think that there's those triggers where things change, your metabolism slows. Obviously, your body, as we all joke daily, it gets sore. But I just think that's a part of life. And in those seasons, you're like, well, this is so different now. Well, of course it is. You know, it's different when you're 14 than when you were nine. Right. Different when you're 45. And, and that's the point, what you just said. I've never even looked at it like that, but him saying run the race. Right. You know, I know Ephesians says where his workmanship, that means I don't have the right. right. The same way a guitar is made to be played or a chair to sit in or a laptop to be using Zoom on. We right. were made by God to love people and live out his purpose. So, right, right. yeah, I, I wish that kid was around. I'm going to look up and see, you know, how it all happened as well. But, um, man, right, right. Exactly. for those listening, you know, man, God is good. And, and use your metal, use your skating, love That's your it. friends, and uh, preach That's the it. gospel. Exactly, so. <laughs> man. I mean, you know, if, if everyone lived by the golden rule, there's no problem. Do one other yep. than you have them doing you. There's no yep. problem. That's it. Love God, love your neighbor. That's what he's called us to do. Yeah. That's right, right, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Stumbler, man. Thank yeah. you for being with us, my friend. Thanks, you guys. Of course. Anytime. <laughs> awesome, brother. Awesome. You are a good man, man. Thank you yeah. again, my friend. Yeah. I mean, truly, truly, thank you, man. Thanks, you guys. God bless you all, and I hope to hear from everyone. Amen. Awesome. God bless you, brother. Have a good one, man. Thank you, man. All right, brother. The Henry Kern Show would like to thank our friends. Cruise Effects. Slip Trick Records. Pick World Guitar Picks. And of course, Nebulous Music Studios in Royston, Georgia.